giving you a voice. And making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone, in the fur in the fun universe, and welcome to the East Coast Beast Coast crossover region recap for week seven. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Connor. And I'm Griffin. On tonight's show, we are going to discuss the we're going we're going to be covering the district champs of the New England District and the Chesapeake District. Real quick before we begin, one of my favorite teams, 7127 Long Metal, has set up a GoFundMe page to help cover their trip to Detroit. It would mean a lot to me and the, and the members of their team if you would like to donate. Producer Tyler will post a link in chat if you wish to help them out. Now, the New England District Champs. Wow, what an event. 64 teams collided at WPI for the most action-packed season, so season event so far at the New England District Championship. It would be 319, Big Bad Bob, who would seed first after the bloodbath of 128 qualifying matches. They would pick up 8th ranked team 195, the Cyber Knights, for a 2018 District Champs reunion. It would be 3467, the Wyndham Windup, who would round out the alliance. They met the 8th seed alliance made up of 509 Red Storm, 238 Crusaders, and 95 the Grasshoppers. Now, I gotta say, this 8th seed, it was an alliance at... If this alliance was at any other event, they could have easily won. Regionals out in California as well. Yes, it was that good. Unfortunately, that was not the case this time. The number one seed would beat eight seed, two to zero. Big shout out to 172 Northern Force for coming in the second match to replace 509. Semifinals. Oh my God, this was, I was not expecting this. The number one alliance met the number four alliance, who was comprised of 230 Galehawks, 176 Aces High, and 4311 Swamp Scott Currents. In the first match, 319 lost comms at the beginning, and 4311 came over to play defense and completely shut down the powerhouse of 195. The second match was a lot closer. Three points is what separated these two alliances, but it would be the number four seed who would upset the number one alliance in advance to the semifinal uh, to the finals. Before we continue, I personally did not believe the number one seed would win the event, but I definitely did not expect them to lose in the semis. This is the first time 195 didn't make it to the finals of New England District Champs. They've been there every single year, 2014 through 2018 or 20 through 2019, actually, and missed out on winning once. That would be the inaugural year of 2014. The finals, the number four seed would take on the number two seed of 125 Neutrons, 2168 Aluminum Falcons, and 558 Robo Squad. Both alliances would win a match, bringing us to a rubber match. Both alliances would fight through tough defense, courtesy of 558 and 4311. 20 seconds left in the match. 558 is heading back to their side of the field to double climb with 125. 4311 has something else to say about it. They put them into a T-bone right outside the hab. 558 breaks free. They align their climber. They drop the section cup. They start to climb, and then time hits zero. They miss their climb. The dust settles here on planet Primus. The unofficial score is tied, 77 to 77. The referees deliberate for what seems to be an eternity. The final score is posted. Your 2019 New England District Championship winners are the number two alliance. Congratulations, a well-earned victory. We had two EI winners this weekend, 63-28 Mechanical Advantage and Team 1729, Inconceivable. We also had four teams win chairmans this weekend. Those would be 5422 Storm Gears, 3654 Tech Tigers, 195 the Cyber Knights, and 125 Neutrons. Personally, I would have loved to see 5962 persevere when chairman's one of their lead mentors not only helped start up their team, but is also alum of 166. 
I also would have loved to see 4905 and Drama to One win chairmans. They've won it the past four or five years at the district qualifying level, but they've come up just short every single time. And I know that they're going to get it eventually. Now, let's get some double gold cling bling in chat for 125 neutrons. Some interesting stats from the competition this weekend. We had a 99.61% success rate on, on crossing the HAB line. We were three, there were three missed opportunities throughout 128 qualification matches. So close. We had 47 unicorn matches. That's an 18.36% success rate. If you don't know what a unicorn match is, that's when you earn four RP in a match. Good luck to all teams who advance to the championship in Detroit. Let's go make New England proud and bring home a world championship title. Hey, Griffin. Connor, I wanted to ask you real quick on here. So in the uh, video that we showed for finals match three, and I'm just going to transition over here on this YouTube, uh, we see the dry coach for 558 seem extremely upset. Was there something kind of behind that additionally, or did they just not climb? And you'll see this right here as he's, or a, I don't know if he's a driver or a drive coach, but like, he seems yeah. very upset right there. Yes, that was the drive coach. Um, I, I was going to go and talk to them uh, after the event. I was unfortunately unable to do so. Um, it seems to, from my point of view, it looks like to be uh, 43 11 when they're playing defense so close to the HAB during the end game. Um, I can't think of any other reason to. I mean, that would be my guess uh, as well, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. There's something else kind of behind that. Yeah, uh, if anyone in chat knows, please, please let us know. I, I would love to get the full story on that one. Um, yeah, so Griffin, over to you, my friend. Tell us a little bit about the Chesapeake District Champs. All right, 58 teams converge on George Mason University for the Chesapeake District Championships. This, is a, this has been by far the most competitive district champs, with almost every robot being considered a good pick for alliance selection. After our intense 116 matches, we had 17 rocket score, rockets scored, 12 of which were unicorns, and two of which were bicorn matches. Which, for those of you who don't know, I have coined the term bicorn match for where both teams get the climb ranking point and the rocket ranking point. Uh, sitting at the top of the rankings was 836, the RoboBees, with a record of 11, 0, and 1. This they easily picked up the fan favorite of 1885, I Light Robotics, and routed it out with 42-42 Fresh Tech, and prepared to run, make a run into the finals. But they were beaten in a set of three matches to the number eight seed. In fact, all of the top four teams were eliminated in the quarterfinals, letting the five, six, seven, and eight seed compete in the semis. After an intense semis, moving on to the finals for the number five seed of 619 Cavalier Robotics, 401 Copperhead Robotics, and 4541 The Cavaneers, and the number 7 seed of 449 Blair Roma Project, 2998 Viking Bots, and 614 Nighthawks. The first match went to the number 7 seed, after 401's intake risk broke at, at the start of a match. In the second round, the number 5 seed came back and won by 2 points, thanks, to, thanks in part to a penalty of 3 points. In the final round, 614 went to defend, but got beached on a cargo boat, allowing the not number five seed to have free reign of scoring, giving the win to the number five seed. Congratulations to 619 Cavalier Robotics, 401 Copperhead Robotics, and 4541 Cavaneers. Congrats also to 5243 and er, Aegis Robotics and 5587 Titans on engineering inspiration, and to 1885 Eyelight Robotics and 1629 Garrett Coalition on Chairman's. So I wanted to take a look back at the season and talk about my personal top five of the district at and like this is a little bit mixture of stats placing and uh my personal favorites so at number five i have 836 robobees who as everybody knows was the number one seed and went undefeated in the uh except for one tie in calls of district champs now I, and they also won the Owings Mill event. And personally, they had they were only one of two uh, robots in our district that had a double hatch auto, which was honestly crazy for this for the level of competitive competitiveness at our district. At number four, I have 1885 Eyelight Robotics, who needs no introduction for their history, and 
the fact that they went from they won their first event, got were the number one seed at their next event, and then were the first pick at their champs. They were a little shaky on consistency during some of their matches, sometimes having like drivetrain problems. And then also I heard that in one match they drove off the hab and shattered a pneumatic fitting. But overall, when everything went right, they were one of two teams in our district that was able to solo a rocket. At number three, I have 346 Robohawks. This team was all about that low scoring. And they did so well with it. Only one of two teams to get double blue in the district, like for their district events. And and personally, it's just a repeat of what they've done in the history. They have got two blue banners last year at the district events, and they got it again this year. And then they were our first pick and went to the semis. The only thing that really beat them was the fact that finally someone wisened up to them and defended the crap out of them. Like, they were so hardly defended in the semis that they were only able to place two hatch panels during semi- one of the semis matches. At number two, I have 2998 Viking Bucks. Now, personally, this is my favorite team from this year. The Viking Bot, for those of you that don't know, the Viking Bots historically are not a good team. Last year, they had a robot that was the first time they ever showed up in the eliminations, and they only had a robot that could climb on the or climb with an elevator on the rung this year they completely turned that around they came in with an every bot that literally milks the design of the every bot to the bone they were one of the fastest or cyclers in the district in fact probably even the world i there's not much i can there's not much more i can do to praise this team all i can tell you is at the first event, they were quarterfinalists. At the second event, they were semifinalists. At the third event, they were a finalist. What's next? Detroit and a winner. And my number one, which is definitely for what how they improved over the season, is 619 Cavalier Robotics. You would be surprised that I would put this on put them on their list, because at their first event, they were a la- a bit of a laughing stock because they unfortunately had a very memeable and like sort of facepalm moment at uh, Richmond when they uh, decline someone with a simple um no, and then in the cor- in the quarters they proceeded to say sorry on their robot to the team that did it, uh, but then they went on to win their second event and then they went on to be the captain of the winning alliance at Digital Champs. And you could see in the robot, they improved. They improved so much. They got their hatches down to where they wouldn't miss. They got the ball handling down so well. It's just like their design of the robot is one I would see like taking down uh, one of the top teams from Michigan, New England, or even California. And also an interesting fact, 619 winning district champs, uh, it carries the torch of a UVA represent representative uh, winning a championship as a, cause UVA basketball recently won the national championship. So a little bit of news for next year. That was a bit surprising. The Chesapeake district championships for 2020 will be held at the Hampton Coliseum in Hampton, Virginia as sponsored by Newport news shipbuilding. But the most interesting part is that it's going to be an 80 team event with two fields of 40 teams. That was very shocking for us or in Chesapeake because we don't we only have 130. So we're going to be have if the numbers don't change a lot, we're going to be having uh, two thirds of the team at or two thirds of teams in our district at the district champs. So we were a little confused. Does that mean our district points go our district slots go up or world slots go up? Do does that mean there's more teams being added than they expect a big growth or is this like just them wanting to get more teams the experience or then uh, get or are they expecting a huge growth in numbers uh, Tyler you have a comment uh, actually just a comment from chat PJ the ref from sim is calling you out and uh, says 
that uh, based on your list on here, I'm trying to find where it was as I started scrolling. I think he was asking about team number 614, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, so where am I looking at this wrong? Is it 614 is in CHS? Is that correct? Yeah, 614 is in CHS. So, so PJ Rest says, is 614 is on this top bot list, CHS is silly. So what are your comments to uh, 614? Why aren't they on your top five list since PJ is the all-knowing of CHS? Well, to be fair, that I'm uh, for I chose the list based upon like sort of picking places. I know six six fourteen would probably be about six or seven on my list, but it's just I felt that these teams were like better throughout the entire season for me, in my opinion, because I feel like six fourteen t- definitely took a dip in uh, district champs, like because they were they were a second pick as opposed to everybody on this list right now is either a first pick or a captain. And th- th- this isn't PJ's show, so uh, sorry, bud. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, if I can make a comment on your on your part for the uh, for next year's district champs, uh, where you said that for two fields of forty teams, I personally love it. However, with the amount of teams in Chesapeake, that doesn't seem right. It's, um, yeah, it, it's the information that was brought to us, and we everybody was confused, and it didn't help that like when they announced it at 8.30 at night because the event had ran so long, uh, half the people like were like, oh, we, we, we they have half a foot out the door. And then all of a sudden they hear this piece of information. And they're like, wait, what? Yeah. So uh, we apparently the, there's a rumor going around in New England as well. And once again, it's just a rumor that District Champs will be at UNH next year and there will be two fields of 40 teams one of them's going to be held in the Whittemore, and the other one's going to be held across the street in the basketball gym. Which that I'm all for two fields, but I'm not all for having your district champs split up into two venues. Mm-hmm. Like, think about like where's the inspiration in that? Cool, you only get to see half the teams that you get to compete with throughout the regular season. That's kind of a letdown and the kick in the face, really. Uh, that's that's not cool. I hope I hope that's I hope half of that is true, which is the two fields. But I ho- I hope to God that it's not two two fields in two different venues. I definitely agree with you. Like the big point, like that's why Worlds is always so nice because the pits yeah. are all in the same place. Exactly. And, which uh, I have to I have to say the only downside I ever ha- saw to St. Louis that Detroit has is uh, proximity of pits to field. Right. I mean, we, we already have to deal with, with, with two champs. Let's, I don't want to have to deal with that with my own district champs. Like, come on, man. That's, that's not cool. Yeah. Um, uh, so you had a top five list. I have a couple teams that I'd like to throw in uh, to the New England mix. Uh, my f- first team there would be 125 Neutrons. Uh, if th- this, w- this was a rough year for them starting off, I mean – Coming into the 2019 season, they had to they got kicked out of their build space at Northeastern and they moved into uh, Revere High School, one of the three schools that they're part of. Uh, and they it, they their first competition this year at Southeast Mass Week two, it was rough. It was rough. They were a first pick of the fifth seed alliance and out in the quarters. And that's I mean, normally a lot of teams would be pretty happy with that, but that is not the 125 norm at all. And it took them a little bit to get going as well. But, you know, in the end, they won the New England District Champs for the second time. First time was back in 2016. And they also won it with 2168 again. So, And they also won Chairman. So this, the robots finally coming together. And they're going to be they're going to be all out guns blazing at Detroit Champs. Uh, once again, 5687, the Outliers, another fantastic machine from them uh semi-final exit but they paired up with their biggest fans 133 and their biggest fan their their biggest fans for each other so that's really interesting um yes that, that is a meme apparently uh <laughs> but uh they're they're gonna go far at, at in detroit uh let's see what other teams that i am very happy to see perform well this year 2168 um this is their third district champ win, 2016, 2017, and 2019. They are now one behind Cyber Knights, who have won 2015, 16, 17, and 18. Uh, 
reiterating again on 4905 Andromeda 1, their chairman's, man, I wish they won chairman's. I, I, I personally feel like they got robbed. Uh, they've they've won it the past four or five years in a row at the district qualifying level, and they just can't seem to get a break at district champs. But they're they're going to get there eventually. I know that they will. Yeah, like on the topic of chairmans, there's a uh, team forty five forty one who did win the event, but did not get chairmans because, to be fair, since twenty seventeen, it has been owned by uh, I. 1885 Islet Robotics and 1629 Gear Coalition for three years in a row. It's only been them winning. But if I if I felt that like if anybody could beat that, I thought 4541 could because mm -hmm. I I thought that I thought they were a re, a very very strong team, a very nice team at that, and I would have been really happy to see one one of them win the uh, chairman's. For sure. And in, in the New England area, it's been 125 and 5422 dominating the chairman scene. Um, and with with a little bit with some surprises here and there from 1735 and then 6328 last year, just in their second season winning chairmans, which is incredible on its own to win chairmans. But in your first year being able to compete for it, that's really that's that's an unbelievable that, that's unbelievable for them. Yeah, yeah, like it's almost as unbelievable as a rookie team winning a district champs their first year. Hmm, I wonder who did that. <laughs> The the funny thing is that that was a trend for the first two years we were in district because 58 of four won in 2016 and then we won in 2017. Mm -hmm. So we were like, hmm, who's going to win it this year? But unfortunately, that streak ended. Right, right. So I think that's all for me. Is, do you got anything else to add, Griffin? I, I said my piece. If anybody oh. has any questions in chat. All right. I think we're going to wrap up for tonight, guys. So thank you so much to everyone who had watched. If you want more First Robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about the show and that this is the place to get more FRC in your life. If you got a few bucks to spare uh, to share through bits, donations, or even a subscription, we appreciate it. But if not, we are totally, we totally understand and delighted to have you on board. On behalf of Griffin, myself, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. Our next show is Infimidation, first in Michigan. Talk to you next year on the East Coast, Beast Coast crossover region recap. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.